I'm Megha Kurian, a research fellow in gender economics from Christ University, India, as well as a lecturer in economics from Christ Bangalore. Uh, so gender is an identity uh, which is gained through repeated bodily acts. Gender theorist uh, Judith Butler, and uh, this is one of my favorite quotes, and I would like to start my presentation with the same. Uh, so uh, we speak about a lot of marginalized sections in the society in India. It can be with the case of women, it can be the case of the scheduled caste, scheduled tribe, etc. However, we often tend to ignore a certain section of the society who is actually known as a transitive community. And they do face a lot of uh, problems. And again, uh, the enormous obstacles that they face in their day-to-day -day situations is very high. And they are likely to be twice as unemployed uh, compared to the other, other groups, uh, the dichotomous gender, male and female, and also their access to health care, as well as even to the housing, etc. They face a lot of issues. So in my presentation, I would like to discuss about the problems faced by transgenders and analysis into the real experiences of the transgender community in Kerala. Uh, so uh, uh, the introduction uh, I have already spoken to you. This is largely with reference to the invisible community. So they largely uh, becomes an invisible community to the entire uh, Indian subcontinent as such. And especially here, I'm talking about the case study of Kerala and the various types of uh, discrimination. And again, even now, India still just uh, hang on to the gender dichotomy concept of being categorized into male and female. So uh, talking about the theoretical background as such, these are the four major uh, theory theories I have used in my entire research. The first one is the capabilities approach given by Amartya Sen Nobel Laureate. So that says that the abilities of a person as freedom and the concept of development as the expansion of this freedom. So talking about the transgender context, what we see is that they are actually just deprived of all these abilities to their freedom. They are deprived of their basic facilities like food, shelter, housing, and the, all the other basic facilities. And as such, so what happens is that they, their concept of expansion of freedom is never happening. Now I would like to talk about Gary Becker's human capital approach. So over here... Uh, uh, it talks about the various human capital to an extent it talks about the various skills and abilities including the education the health etc which always increases my potential as an individual to increase the productivity however when we talk about the transgender community what happens is like they are are actually not able to increase, there is no scope for the increase in productivity for this individuals. So human capital approach theory also becomes an important concept. Now the next uh, theory, post-materialist value, it's a theory from political science. Here we are talking about the concept of um, shift from materialist values to post-materialist values. So the theory says like this, or the theory tries to explain the concept that when a country become more and more developed, this starts to shift their focus from materialist values like uh, the basic facilities of life to post-materialist values like uh, securing freedom, the right, to, uh, the, the right to expression and other things. So this starts to move to, to the post-materialist value. So then talking about the transgender community as such, uh, there is no scope we can even talk more about this because even in my context in the study I have found out they are still trying to struggle with the basic facilities or you can say that the materialist values. Now talking about the most important theory which I have used in my theory which in my research study which is the queer theory uh, uh, brought about by the gender theorist Judith Butler. So it talks about the concept of uh, the performative nature of gender, which says that it is actually, first uh, we have actually uh, discussed uh, in the yesterday session as well. So I was listening to this. So the performative nature of gender. So Judith Butler emphasized on the fact that it is not only that it is a social construct, rather than what happens is that women they observe the other women and they actually tries to just uh, 
uh, reciprocate the same and that is how the uh, gender roles just again and again it is just repeated that is what judith uh, butler says so uh, that is the thing and again just because of this uh, uh, theory uh, of the uh, qr uh, as such uh, uh, the third community we can say that the uh, transgender community are still struggling a lot the next one is the theory of discrimination from gary becker uh, which he has emphasized in his book the economics of discrimination which says that the employers tend to actually discriminate the employees who comes from this this uh, this community and as a result of this they end up um, just reaching out to jobs which are less productive for them and which also pays them less remuneration as such so this is actually the theoretical background on which i'm trying to talk about my study so now, uh, these are the various review of literature. So I'm not going to uh, uh, explain this because it might take more time. So uh, the social factors, I have looked into the social factors from the different um, studies. And the next thing is the economic factors, which I have tried to look into. Uh, the various uh, review of literatures I have just uh, looked into to find my research gap. Then the political factors as such okay now uh, the research objectives two major research objectives i would like to talk today the first one is the socio economic condition of transgenders in kerala the second one is the problems of transgenders in kerala and my emphasis will be more on to the problems of transgenders now the conceptualization the transgender the term uh, refers to those people whose gender identity is different from the gender they were assigned that birth and the socio-economic condition i have actually used some constructs or variables to measure that so social uh, will be the inclusion from the part of the family society and the co-workers the economic i have uh, looked into whether the transgender community members are able to lead a minimum standard of living the third one is a political aspect whether they are able to have the right to equal voice and participation in the key development decisions of the communities or the lives that they are carrying out now the methods so it's a purely an exploratory study in nature primary data collection because uh, had uh, secondary data is not available for them and now the next thing is uh, the, uh, the data sources and also the methods I have used is uh, in-depth interview method, structured questionnaire and focus group discussion. Uh, so the sampling design is purposive sampling. So 40 transgenders has been interviewed for this and it is uh, it has been used, the excerpts as well as Likert scale, descriptive statistics, etc. Now I'll start explaining uh, what my entire study is first in order to talk about the socio-economic condition. That is my objective number one. So when I'm talking about the social condition, so these are the data sets and the excerpts that the respondents have shared with me. The first concept is regarding the social condition, whether are they accepted or whether they are actually becoming a part of the entire society as such. So uh, from the data, you can see that just... Uh, just the 35 percent says that the condition is average in nature okay so still uh, it is uh, it needs to go a long run so again many of them says that 60 percent of the society tries to accept but still 40 percent are not even accepting and there are even respondents who says that they do not keep contacts with the family since four years or even more than that so which actually uh, talk about the trauma or the pain that they um, face actually and also so these are the factors i have considered the denial of opportunity so that is uh, that is one of the major things that they have shared denial of equal opportunities in schools in workplaces hospitals uh, and in all spheres of life spiritually now uh, talking about the attitude of the society so recently why am i uh, talking about this is because uh, recently the kerala government has brought about a lot of schemes for the community members uh, so that i just wanted to check out with them with the, this have brought about some changes from the part of the society and yes it has so 80 percent says that it has changed and the reasons i have jotted down over here the government policies definitely the continuous struggle that the community members are uh, showing the next thing the great media support and also it has to be appreciated that the kerala government has provided jobs to this community members in their uh, metro uh, scheme aspect 
metro project as well. okay but still again we have to understand that uh, uh, there are still a lot of people who has to change their mind now talking about the economic condition which is the major focus here uh, so i was trying to see whether there are ways to lead a minimum standard of living so when uh, i was interviewing the respondents i got a lot of insights from them the major thing is that there are actually people who just drink pipe water and stay in a metropolitan city like kochi and many of them they don't want to just go with the with uh, the profession of being a sex worker but still they are forced to because of the thing that the other job does not generate uh, ample income for maintaining the minimum standard of living now now again uh, this is a result that you can see from this slide so 40% says that it is just average in nature and uh, the other figures also you can see. so it's just not that great from the part of a very literate state like kerala now talking about the political condition so it was very interesting to see when um, uh, one of them uh, was just talking to me like right to equality is not even provided to women then how can we expect it from for, for us this was actually one of the very interesting responses that they were sharing so uh, are they able to talk about their um, political rights so okay, when you talk about the equality of rights so 30% again average in nature uh, now uh, 12.5% uh, says that it is good in nature uh, and again again we have to appreciate from the part of the government that they are trying to uh, make uh, this community members into their different parties as well so that they are giving them opportunities but still a, still a long way to go that is a condition now this is my paper basically talks about the problems of transgenders and i have actually divided into different sub themes okay so uh, i'll just move the first one transgender identity so in my study i was able to understand that uh, from the uh, graph you can see 75 percentage of the people are from male to female uh, transgender and just 25 percentage so i was very curious to know what is the reason why 75 male to female and just 25 so the reason is very simple so uh, many of the female to male people okay so they say that many of them tries to hide their identity the reason is very simple uh, the society even the female to male uh, i am talking about society even uh, view them as females and there are very higher cases of sexual harassment to this community so female to male transformation or even identities are not that even coming into uh, picture because of the uh, concept of this the higher uh, cases of uh, sexual harassment to those people now talking about the age the group so when you uh, see the age group you can see that hardly uh, 45 uh, 41 to 50 per, uh, 50 the age group i can i was able to just find only 15% over there and it was very surprising to see that i couldn't see any transgender above the age of 50 and i was uh, uh, very curious to know what is the reason for this so in my study i was able to find it out that there are hardly very less number of transgenders above the age of 50 in kerala the reason is very simple many of them doesn't survive the age of 50 due to the fact that many of them commit suicides or they actually die due to poverty hiv aids or even uh, uh, they actually uh, especially the poverty aspects many of them uh, survive age of 50 okay so that is one interesting thing and now the next thing is regarding the association so in kerala we do have transgender associations and recently it has actually become more popular among the transgender community so they say that while well, become 65 percentage of the people whom i have interviewed they are a part of the association and they say that it is a sense of uh, togetherness to this people so that they wants to always because they have excluded from the family to an extent even from the society so this associations uh, actually give them a feeling of togetherness as such now 75 percentage below poverty line so and again that is one of the striking feature you have to look into so it simply means most of them 75 percentage lives below poverty and also here uh, 
uh, there is a reference of ration cards. And what do you mean by ration cards? In India, we do have a system of providing ration cards. Ration card is nothing but an official document given by the state government so that the beneficiaries can actually get food grains such as subsidized food. But uh, just 7.5 percentage of the transgender community members are having ration cards. The thing is because over there they have to give their identity as such and it is very difficult for them. So that is the reason why many of them doesn't have ration cards. Now talking about the uh, education, uh, educational qualifications. So from the graph you can see that uh, compared to all the other states in India, yes, it is uh, a great indicator in Kerala. Uh, so you can see that almost um, 10 percentage are uh, the type of people who are able to complete their post graduation. But now I just wanted to tell you something regarding the Kerala context. Kerala is one of the highly literate states in the country, which has 94 percent literacy. So compared to that figure, so this is still uh, in the process. So we, have, we should definitely have a long way to go. That is the thing. Now talk. Talking about the difficulties uh, during school days. So many of them used to just not, they don't even want to talk about the school days that they were going through. So the hardships that you can see from the slide, they were not even allowed to use the washrooms in the uh, schools over there. Even teachers used to blame them because of this. And the amount of loneliness, the sexual harassment that they have to face was very high in nature. So 52.5% says that, yes, we actually faced a lot of difficulties during school days. And now talking about the dropout, uh, dropout ratio. So this is, again, one of the interesting things which uh, stands apart from the other studies. So when you look into the dropout ratio, attrition level, you can always see that uh, the transgender people have uh, higher rates of dropouts. But in my study, I was about to find only one percentage uh, of the dropout. The reason is very simple and it is very striking as such. Uh, so they say that this is because I, I didn't reveal my identity till my education was done. So they knew that if I am able, I am going to reveal my identity, I won't be able to complete my education. So they didn't reveal most of them. That is why the 99 percentage of them were able to complete their education just because of the thing that they were hiding their identity and leaving till that years of age. But now just understand from the perspective that leaving, hiding their identity, gender identity and leaving for a couple of years is actually a trauma that they were going through. Now the employment, yes, uh, many of them, 86 percentage of the people are employed, well and good, but the problem over here, when you look into the monthly income, so majority of the people, almost nearly 60 percent just earns less than 12,000 and which is actually not a good figure or not income not a good income as such to sustain a metropolitan city or even in Kerala, Kerala's context. Now we will talk about the job denials and mocking such workplaces. Yes, 57 percent says that um, uh, the supervisors used to discriminate me and Lord, I have to resign from many places and uh, even just because of the thing that I was a transgender. And again, a lot of uh, absurds also I have actually inserted in my slide. So uh, again, even education, even they are educated, but their gender identity is something uh, that the people are concerned, even the society are so concerned about. Now, 63% says we had to face a lot of mocking at the workplaces, which makes it very difficult for us to continue in the works that they are doing. Now, talking about the housing, which is a very important thing and one of the basic rights as such, many of them look into the like 62.5% percentage or you can say 63 percentage uh, uh, takes rented apartments and lives in Kerala. The reason is simple. Most of them have been excluded from their family because they have revealed their gender identity. And the other people, 37.5 percentage, uh, they actually have a permanent uh, household or they are able to stay with their family. Now, one of the interesting uh, conversations that I had with one of my respondents is that uh, they had to meet 30 brokers to get a house for rent. And again, uh, the, even amidst the fact that they are well-educated, they were actually have a decent amount of salary, still their gender identity matters to society. Uh, 
So these are some of the things. Now health. So 62% says that yes, I have faced a lot of difficulties in attaining the health facilities. So, uh, and especially the discrimination is very high in the context of the government hospital. So they were actually saying that, sharing some of their experiences. So uh, one of the doctors, uh, they were uh, trying to approach this, that said that you belong to that category, I do not want to even treat you. So, uh, so these are some of the mental tra trauma that they have actually shared with me when I was uh, doing the study. Okay, and again, uh, the concept of uh, looking at them, they don't even want to be heard as such. So these are some of the things. Now the financial inclusion experience. So 60% uh, uh, they actually post this, but again, the thing is that the savings are very less in nature. So they are, uh, one, one of the uh, respondents was sharing with me, I'm unable to meet even the day-to-day -day requirements and how can you uh, ask me for a savings? So all this are some of the financial inclusion experiences that they go through. So many of them possess a bank account, but again, uh, it will be having a, the, the amount of savings is purely very less. Now the harassment, even uh, you have to understand that 95% age has gone through any sort of harassment in their uh, lives as such. Even it can be the harassment from the police who are actually supposed to safeguard their rights. And uh, they, many of them were beaten severely by the police authorities as such. And uh, they actually hope that if there is somebody from our community who can be in the police, and again, nowadays they are coming also, which is a ray of hope for them. So, uh, so if anybody from our community was there, it would have been great for them. So now a lot of uh, arrest, from this community, a lot of clash with the police people and they just want to uh, charge a lot of things which they are actually not involved in. So that is the thing. And now I would like to just uh, end my, conclude my presentation with some of the policy implications which I would like to discuss you as well. So it would happen in India, we do have a um, uh, three tier system that is the central government, the state government, and the local self government. So, the local self government is the authority which is always in tune or very close with the people. So, as uh, according to me, I feel that if there are some appointments from the transgender community in the local self government, so that they can actually increase the uh, closeness with the people and increase their acceptance in the society. Now, again, uh, the school authorities should definitely see, see to the concept of dropouts. They should make sure that the number of people, uh, the number of transgender community members, uh, the dropouts are being less, and they should be more accommodative in nature and open-minded in nature. Then they should be in order to tackle the financial inclusion program problem, there should be more insurance programs for the transgenders. Now, again, shelter homes. I'm talking about shelter homes because the transgender people, as I have discussed in my slides, they face a lot of housing issues. So if it would have been great from the part of the government, if they can actually come up with uh, accommodative shelter homes for these people. Now, again, uh, talking about employment opportunities. So government is doing, but still, uh, uh, it, it, there is a long way to that is the thing. So employment opportunities definitely finance matters, and it is the la money is the life life blood for the entire economy. So providing them employment opportunities can actually nudge can act as a nudge to reduce the number of uh, begging and sex workers in the transgender community. Then separate restrooms in the public places should be there. Then most importantly, gender education. So this is very important because. Indians still, uh, they just, they're very rigid in terms of the of gender dichotomy. And so I believe that gender education should be part of a syllabus so that it will create uh, more food for thought to the to Indians, basically, uh, and more uh, supportive psychologists in Kerala. So these are some of my policy implications. And uh, with that, I would like to conclude my presentation.